talks about being blessed. It's, it says uh, you, you wouldn't, uh, God, I can't even think of the word now. But anyways, it's an awesome sign. I hung it up in my office. You want to see it, come by and look at it. Eugene made it. And uh, not gifted, but blessed. Is he? Yeah, and he said he's going to put the money toward the church. He makes those things. He goes out and picks up wood and wire and all kinds of stuff, and he makes it. And, uh, but uh, you know what? God can take a drug addict. He can take somebody who's never had a drug, and he can turn them into the best person in the world if we just let him. We've got to let him into our life. Brother Israel, we love you. So good to see you and your family here today. You know, we knew, we knew, and we prayed that it would happen, and God, God made it come to be. Wasn't nothing we did overwhelming. We prayed, and that's all you got, prayer. Prayer is so simple, you know. You're driving down the freeway, and you want to cuss at everybody, just pray a little bit. It's, uh, it's pretty easy, but those drivers, I don't even like to go to Victorville anymore. I, uh, I got so frustrated Friday, I was just really upset. I just, traffic. Costco, you couldn't move your buggy around. It was just, it was, I told Rochelle, we are never doing this again on a Friday. You know, really. Yeah, it gets you all frustrated, you know, and the people try to cut you off and stuff. And But we went back on Saturday, and it was a whole different story. We had an awesome Saturday yesterday, and it was great. And it was joy. Joy. Joy is a simple word. Last week, Brother Price talked about love. Next week, Brother Price is going to be speaking about peace. So, so we're talking about love, joy, peace. It's all about living. Living life. That's right. It's all about living life. And uh, it's so simple if we just let it be. We're going to be reading today out of John 15, 21 through 20, 16, 21 through 24. And then we're going to be reading out of Galatians 5, 22, and 26, through 26. I'll be reading that. And uh, the focus thought is every person has been promised joy in his relationship with God. Righteousness, peace, and joy come with the infilling of the Holy Ghost. The focus verse comes out of Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You say, why do they keep saying that? Because they want to get it. They want you to get it. You know, sometime in school we got taught something, then they teach it again the next day because we didn't get it the first day. And then the Bible is a lot of that where if you read in the Old Testament, you can cross-reference with the New Testament. And you say, well, how could they have knew about that back then when it ain't going to happen until way up here? But it's all, God's trying to tell us how to live our life. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to read 21. Y'all can read 22, and we'll just go on. A woman, when she's travail, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. Number 23 says, And in that day ye shall ask me nothing Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he will give it, he will give it you. That's what it says. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read you Galatians 5, 22 through 26. 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. 
23, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. 24, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. 25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. 26, let us not be desirous of vain glory. We shouldn't be going around patting ourselves on the back. That's what that's telling you. Provoking one another, any, anything one another, envying one another. We shouldn't envy nobody nothing. If somebody's got a better car, better house, better clothes, it don't matter. We're all born the same. They may have more than we have, but they're no better than us. We're all the same. There ain't no uncles and aunts. We're all cousins. You know, praise the Lord. Y'all can be seated. And, uh, yeah, it, you know what? We sell cars, and people come in with a new car, and I don't get upset a bit. I, I thank God and that God blessed them with that new car. But, you know, soon it ain't long. They come back and say, hey, can I buy another car? And, you know, you just got to love people. That's all it's about. And, um uh, if somebody buys a new house, God bless them. Brother Price's house sits on that driveway. Man, I just think that's the awesomest thing in the world. I'm happy for Brother Price. That didn't, they just, just didn't walk over and get the key to it. They put a lot of work and time and money into getting that. And God blessed them with it. And he won't give you more than you can handle. So Brother Price is going to come up here and read the culture connection for you. But, uh, yeah, just, just somebody's got something you ain't got. If you want it, just work for it. You'll get it. Years ago, when we first got married, this guy had a, two new Suburbans. And he, they were quite well-to-do, and they were my boss. And I was driving an old beat-up Ford, and I thought, you know, one day, Lord, you know, I've had seven brand-new Suburbans. And I ain't bragging. I'm just saying, I work for what I work for them, and I got them. God let me work for them and get them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm going to be reading the uh, Culture Connection today, the source of absolute joy. Uh, I just want to say that I really love this, this Sunday school lesson, and um, I pray that we all just plug in and, and take it to heart, church. I mean, we try, yeah, it's a nice house, but really when it comes down to it, one day, a gas spill or whatever, one night we came to church, and after church we went back, the entire wall fell down, you know, right after church. Granted, God used that for a purpose because we needed something else done. But it just shows you how temporary everything really is. You could go from here home and your entire life could be changed if it's based on only the things that you see and only the things that you have here on earth. So that's not joy. Amen? That's not joy. And the lesson is going to talk about it here today. Amen? So I'm going to hurry up and get out of the way. The, the, the culture connection says the source of absolute joy. It says the Holy Spirit is the true source of lasting joy. Paul wrote, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 14, verse 7. Sadly, this world's concept of true joy fails to square with Paul's definition of its source. In his Bible titled, the, in his Bible study, titled Bible Study on Joy, Seven Things You Need to Know, Robert Dreiskel observed, the joy that the world offers is a pale imitation of the true joy only God can give us. The joy that unsaved people experience is a temporary joy that comes and goes depending on the situation that person is in at the time. If things are going well, there is joy. When things are difficult, there is no joy. While depression sometimes has a psychological cause, could it be that some depressions are caused by an unbiblical understanding of true joy and unrealistic expectations in this life? When people fail to achieve their expectations, they often plunge into the depths of sadness, disappointment, perhaps even despair, which, which certainly could trigger or contribute to a state of depression. For believers, however, we have received the Holy Ghost, which is the source of all true joy. However things may be going in this life, we can have absolute joy. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Price. Whew. 
the Holy Ghost. You notice how many times it's been mentioned. And it's just, it's a gift. You don't have to pay for it. Praise the Lord. The outline today is the source of joy. Receiving the Holy Ghost, there it is again. Fruit of the Spirit, answers to prayer. Anybody ever had an answer to prayer? We all have. We all have. Little bitty things. We, it's so simple. But a lot of huge things, too. Our children. I, I was going to bring uh, Andrew, Caleb, and Victoria up here and tell you this is my joy. And they are my joy. They're my grandkids, and I love them. And uh, I see them every day. They come and go up my house at their will, and it's the way it's supposed to be, you know. And uh, if you don't have no grandkids yet, just wait till you get them because they're pretty awesome, you know. Our children are awesome. Donna and Rochelle, they, they was my blessing for many years and always will be. You know, I tell Rochelle all the time, you may be 30-something, but you're still my baby. And, uh, yeah, and that's just the way it's supposed to be. And the Cadizas, I, I want to compliment you guys on your kids and their behavior. I, uh, I admire it, and uh, I know you, you, got, you, got, you got over half a dozen, but, you know, you're taking care of them, you're loving them, and it shows in their actions. So I just uh, want to say that today, too. Praise the Lord. And ex exportation, that's a big word, but we got it out. Joy affects our emotions when we cry, when we laugh. We've seen some awesome laughing. You ever seen somebody have the laughing spirit? We had Vicki Bolt down the hill one time, and we couldn't hardly get her in a car. She was laughing so hard. She had the laughing spirit all the way back to Barstow. We stopped at a stop sign. She jumped out and ran around the car. I said, oh, Lord, help us, Jesus. But, you know, if it's, it's, above, if it's of God, you know it is. You know, you, you can't pretend... Uh, you can't pretend to speak in tongues. You can't pretend to get laid out, you know. But if God does it, somebody said, if I come to your church, do I, do I have to roll on the floor? I said, no, but if you're down there, you better talk to God before you get up. Isn't that right? You know, I mean, if God lays you out, you know, he, he's doing some serious business with you. So, anyways, joy affects our emotions. The expectations of joys. The strength of joy. Examples of joy. Moses, it was deliverance. Mary, it was a revelation. With Paul, it was an adversary. And Pentecost, Pentecost, salvation. Pentecost, salvation. We got to make it to heaven. That's all there is to it. Our hope and joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Have you ever heard that? There's a song that says that. We don't sing it much anymore, but it is. Joyful, admiring, and return of Jesus Christ. That's what we're working toward. We have a goal. We're on a journey. Our journey is to make it to heaven one day, whether he comes today as a rapture or whether we go by the grave. Our, our goal is to make it to heaven. You know, it's just no better place. And the Bible tells you all about it. Praise the Lord. That will show me the path of life in thy presence and fullness of joy. In my right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. That's in Psalm 1611. Uh, Sister Doherty is going to come and read you a couple of verses. I looked in the back of my book, in my Bible. And I only found really two verses on joy. And one's in Psalms and uh, the other one, Nehemiah. And uh, she's going to read them for you real quick here. Praise the Lord. I believe in using people. This is Sunday school. I ain't up here preaching. I'm not trying to impress nobody. Praise God. Um. Nehemiah 8.10. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the, eat the fat and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye 
sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And also Psalms 1611, thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy as at thy right hand there are pleasures for everyone evermore amen jesus name praise the lord we got some awesome ladies in this church sister price is a good reader i mean she'd come up here i could give her the book go sit down she she could read she reads aloud and boisterous you know yeah she like you know well kids you know she got some kids so Sometimes she has to be a little boisterous, but uh, that's just part of it, you know. Praise the Lord. I'm going to try to read this here, uh, contemplating the topic, and the topic is joy. It's why the, wor why the words happiness and joy are similar and associated. They represent two fundamentally different levels of emotional expressions, experience. Happiness tends to be shakeful, emotional, and expressive. Well, happiness can be all kinds of things. You know, we, we just, a lot of us get happy over a little bitty thing, you know. And uh, a lot of us get happy over other things. Uh, our children, though. I, this church is so blessed to have so many children in it, I'm telling you. And... Uh, you say what you will, they're coming up in the right place. I grew up in under a pew, and I'm 70. I'm still in church today. My sister's 78, and God bless her, huh? <laughs> she was the firstborn. She had to put up with all five of us other ones, you know. Praise the Lord. We was talking the other day about when she had appendicitis. We all thought she was going to die, and Mom and Dad wasn't home. And they were all hugging her and kissing her goodbye because they thought she would die. And, and I went and hid behind the stove, and I thought if I didn't kiss her, she wouldn't die. Well, it works. She's here today, right? I mean, you're looking at her. You're talking to her. But, uh, you know, we all have feelings. You know, my folks come home. They was all upset because the neighbor took her. But when they found out the reason, they, were, they felt real blessed that we had a neighbor kind enough to do that, you know. And... Uh, that was back in West Virginia, you know, and it was, a, it was a good time in life. Everything we did as a family, we did as a family. If mom and dad did it, six kids did it. And uh, when we come to California, I didn't like California. And I was like 12 years old. I tried to get back to West Virginia three or four times. I ran away to Flagstaff. My dad came and got me. The next time I made it all the way to the other side of Missouri, my dad come and got me. But when he did, he took me to West Virginia, see Myrtle, before I come back. And, uh, but, you know, you, you're, you're, as a child, as a mind, I worry about Caleb walking from the store to the house. And when I was 15, I was driving across the United States. That don't make it right. I just had a longing in my heart to go home. You know, I wanted to be back on the farm where everybody did everything together. But uh, never did make it back there. When we did, the house was gone. But Merlo and I, my sisters, we went down there. The guy had horses, and he let us go down and walk around. And it, it was good for a minute. My girls, they know all about West Virginia. I used to take them every year. And they hated vacation sometimes because they had to ride the car so far. But when they were there, they enjoyed themselves. But, and then they had to ride the car so far back home. But uh, I want them to see where I came from. I want them to see my joy, like drinking water out of a pipe coming out of the mountain. Yeah, it was good. It was purified through the rocks. It's better than Avion, you know. I mean, because it was real. And it, it was a joy, you know. And those towns back there, it, it, West Virginia is real depressing in some ways. But uh, my brother and I went back a few years ago, and uh, it still makes your heart pump just a little bit extra to see some of those things. The schools you went to, the one two-room school, one through four on one side and six through eight on the other. And it was right across the street from the house, so it was kind of cool. We 
We just ran over there. And if we didn't, we got upset, we just run home, you know. And Mama sent us right back, you know. <laughs> it was a good time. Praise the Lord. The source of joy. The Holy Spirit of God is a source of true and lasting joy in addition to one's initial reception of, reception of the Spirit. There are several spiritual disciples that facilitate God's spiritual work within our lives. He wants to work in your life today. He wants to bless you. I tell you, when I see somebody just really getting a dose of the Holy Ghost, it, it's, it does my heart well. You know, you, if you see somebody like that up here at the altar, just go stand by them a little bit and just, you feel it. You feel it. You know it. You know it's real. Praise the Lord. Receiving the Holy Ghost. A, pe a person may experience certain levels of happiness and contentment apart from the Spirit. But no measure of pleasure and enjoyment compares to the satisfaction one experiences by receiving the Holy Ghost. It just, it keeps talking over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, and the Holy Ghost. It's so simple. Three, three, three little things that uh, mean so much. It says, how does joy contribute to more fruitful, to a more fruitful life? How much more do you accomplish when joy is present in your life? Joy unspeakable and full of glory. It says, how can you find joy in worship when you come up to the church physically tired or feeling weary in the spirit? How can you captivate a mindset where joy will grow in your life? God can take all that strife and all that worry away. And fill it with joy. Yeah, it, it's just so simple. It talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Answering answers to prayer. Exportation. Joy affects our emotions. The, exper the experiences of joy. The strength of joy. It just tells you joy, it's pretty cool, isn't it? I mean, when you think about it, it kind of makes you want to smile. And smiling is good. It's a whole lot better than frowning. Praise the Lord. In what ways do you express your feelings in worship? How can you feel less conscious about worship and allowing the joy of the Spirit to flow more and freely in you. And it also, in the Bible, talks a lot about worshiping the Lord, singing songs to the Lord. You know, if we don't like worshiping God down here, we don't want to go to heaven. Because there's going to be 30 minutes of silence, and then all heaven's going to break loose. And that's what the rest of your life's going to be about up there. I'm sure that river, we're going to be able to catch a trout in there. I remember Brother Scott, when he was at Cottonwood Cove and caught his first big mouth bass. He was pretty joyful that day. And then up rolled the game board and says, son, you can't be fishing here. But he didn't take that fish. He might have had to fight Brother Scott for that fish because uh, we were just kind of in the, where the boats are there, just kind of sat. Because Brother Ross, he was broke down to the side, so we thought, well, while he's there, we just throw a line out. But, uh, and one night we was fishing, and he caught a fish so big, we was in his truck, and the little bell rang. Dee -dee -dee -dee. So we jumped out and went over there with the light. And he got that dude right to the lake, right to the land. And we went to get the net, and it just, shoo. He wasn't so joyful that night. 
the truck didn't seem near as nice. I don't think we caught a thing the rest of the night. But we had a good time. You know, it was a good time of fishing together. Praise the Lord. We all experience adversary at some point in our lives. How do you turn troubles and hardships into testimonies? Joy in your life and brings happiness to others. If you're smiling, they'll be smiling. I told somebody the other day, what do you got on your eyes? And she looked at me and she said, why do they look funny? I said, no, they look very nice, but they look very different. She said, well, I put some highlight on them. I said, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the hairs. They look all funny, like you uh, put starch on them, you know. And, uh, yeah, it was a waitress at a restaurant, and her name is Linda. I was just, she's from Boron, too, sis. And I was just talking to her, just she's a friend of mine, you know. And I wasn't downing her. I was trying to tell her they look very nice. But I come at her a different way. And, uh, and at the end, she gave me a little hug and kind of said, thank you. And uh, joy in many ways, you know. And we're all different. Wouldn't it be sad if we was all alike? Wouldn't it be very nice? Would it, Brother Price? We'd all be living in your house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sister Price shaking her head. No. Praise God. That's why God made us all different. You go out here in this parking lot and look around, there are maybe a couple cars that look alike. But everybody's different, you know. You, you, everybody's different. When they go to the grocery store, you ever go in a grocery store and somebody's got a big cart of food and they're headed to the register? You want to just walk up and say, would you go get another one? I need this one. They're not going to give it to you. And you got home, you'd have stuff you didn't even want. But... Sometimes you want to do that. You say, man, they already got it done, you know. But it just, uh, I don't know. I've done that. I, I have never done it. I have never took it. One time somebody took our basket at Christmas time. We had a bunch of stuff in it. I turned around and talked to Vicky, and it was gone. So evidently they wanted it worse than we did, right? So we had to get another basket and refill it. But uh, we're all different individuals, you know. Brother Scott, he's pastor. He's different. But uh, when he worked out to the Ford, he was a model maker. And uh, I couldn't go out there and be a model maker because I didn't know anything about it. But if I was trained to do that, I could do it. And people come into church and they say, I don't know how to worship. I don't know how to pray. All they got to do is give their life to God. And it'll all work out. You'll learn how to pray. And it talks about testimonies in here. Sometimes we have testimonies. And Brother Fergo, I haven't forgot you. But uh, we have testimonies, and we need testimonies in church. Because God could do something real special for Darla. And if she don't get a chance to testify, how are we going to know about it? You know, really? I mean, that's why we have testimony, you know. And uh, sometimes God will lead you to a person or, or you call them out because God tells you to call them out. And they have a word that we need to hear. Eugene, I, I call Eugene a lot because Eugene has a testimony in his life. He is a testimony. Brother Eugene could stand up, turn around, sit down, he testified. And me too. I, I, when I started down at Brother Dominguez's, I was a sight. My shirt tail was out. My cigarettes was in my pocket. My bling was on my hand. And I thought that was it. I had it made. And I'd sit out in the truck and smoke a cigarette before I went in there. And sometimes I'd drive around the street up by the hospital and back because I really didn't want to go. But once I walked in the house of God and let God turn my life around, you know, he'll cut your sideburns. He'll tuck your shirt in. Yeah, he'll give you, he'll give you things that he wants just for you. Now, my, what God does in my life and wants me to do may not be in your life and what he wants you to do. We're all different. And God deals with us. And you say, how can he do it? He knows every hair on every head in here. He knows every star in the heavens. And uh, I used to come back down the road from Vegas, and I used to say, I'd be praying, and 
little voice say, how could he hear you? There's so many people. Don't worry about that. He hears you. He'll answer you. You'll be driving down the road just bawling like somebody done hit you in the head with a ball bat. And all it is, you just got so much joy in your, in your heart. And the tears start flowing. That's a good thing. That's joy. And there ain't nothing in this world better than living for God. Pastor Scott, you can come on up here anytime. Praise the Lord. I love y'all, and this is joy. Next week, Brother Scott's going to be talking about peace. Brother Price. Brother Price loves to read. Brother Price is a good reader, and, and he does it with authority, too. I really don't like to read, but I can talk your head off. And uh, I love you. I want you to keep in mind joy. You know, when you meet somebody on the street, just look at him and smile. You know, sometimes I walk up to the biggest person in Walmart, and I say, why are you so sad today? And they'll look at you and say, well, I'm not sad. I say, well, you're looking. And uh, I say, is everything okay? You don't know who they are. You don't need to know who they are. But if God leads you to them, just talk to them for a few minutes. They're not going to hit you, you know. They might want to, but they won't. You know, Lord bless you. I was, I was looking here in the lesson, and joy, joy comes, the greatest joy is uh, being filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says that they were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. And I was reading over this lesson this morning before, before we had this, and then I started investigating you know you like to investigate I like to investigate things I um, I don't just shoot my mouth off and, and not investigate um, I've gotten a lot of trouble doing that uh, earlier in my years and uh, the word joy how, how many did, has anybody ever looked at the first time joy was mentioned in the word of God first time joy was mentioned in the word of God was when and it's found in 1 Samuel chapter 18 verse 6 and it was when David was returning from the slaughter of the Philistines when Goliath was killed and the women of all the cities of Israel you talk about a ladies man right and he was just a young boy 12, 13 years old, and all the ladies came out singing and dancing. Imagine that, Brother Hicks. And they were singing with joy and with, with instruments of music. They weren't worshiping David. They were worshiping their God that, that delivered them. And many times we get joy in our life when we face a Goliath in our life. And it affects other people around us. When you go through the trial of your life, as a pastor, I get joy when I see you make it through it. It brings, it brings joy around. It affects everybody around you. The, the last time that joy is, is mentioned, and it's, the word joy is found in 155 separate verses. And the, the last verse it is found in... Um, In Jude, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. God gets excited when he sees you able to walk by his power, by his strength, by his guidance, when he, when he sees you cross that finish line now unto him that is able to keep you from falling he gets joy out of helping you amen but you have to want help to get it if we can stand in this place I'm, 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 gonna, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna preach but 
joy today is found, you know, in, 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 in the lesson, the, the odd thing about joy is David and, and his wife, the thing that made David excited, it actually had the opposite effect on his wife. David danced out of his kingly robe. His wife, Micah, was despising him from a window. So what God can do for you, if you're not right with God, it won't bring joy to your life. You can't just show up to church and expect joy to come your way. You have to be in the right mindset, in alignment with God to receive joy. That's why I've, I've always said the things of this world are not blessings. They're provision. I've had many people say, well, God bless me. I, I got this car and I got this and I'm a millionaire and I got all this money and, and things are really, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed of God. There's people that are billionaires that are going to hell. Are they blessed? No, that's provision. The second to the last verse in the Bible that has the word joy and it says, I have no greater joy than to see that my children walk in truth. That's where my joy is. Brother Hicks, you taught a wonderful lesson this morning. Joy is not from money. Joy is not from anything temporal. I was talking to Sister Desiree yesterday, and she's talking about her kids. And you could see joy just come to her face when she's talking about her children. And I've seen other people talk about their kids and, and anger and all this and all that. And what if God felt about you the same way you feel about them? Right? Think about it. But yet God said, you bring joy to my life. All heaven breaks into praise and, and worship and rejoicing when one name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And so joy is supposed to come from things that are going to last, that are eternal. And our kids are what's eternal. Victories will always be victories in our life. When David returned from Goliath, that joy, there was a time in David's life when everybody had turned against him, Brother Aries, and, and his own men had turned against him. But the Bible says he went and got the sword of Goliath and it strengthened him. He looked back upon the victories of his past and it brought joy and comfort to his life. You don't face your giant just to have it for that one time that giant you face is to keep you to say I did this for you in the past I'm this Jesus, the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday today forever joy that's why we sing that song I get joy when I think Then after about 15 years in church, Brother Nichols, we sing that. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I face, but I mean to think about what, and our perspective changes. I look at Brother and Sister Alvarez, and I see their kids beside them. That's joy. I look at Brother Weber and his handsome little boy next to him. Father like son. Look at that. That brings joy. Not only to me, but it brings joy to them. We have to understand money, they don't bring joy. Fame don't bring joy. Brother and Sister Aries, when I see your little boy, give me that big old smile of his. 
I love that smile. He could conquer the world with that smile. Sister Sarabia, I know it brings joy to have your daughter with you in church with you this morning. I'm trying to bring a perspective. I'm not, I'm not trying to take over what he taught. But I'm actually talking about the same thing he talked about. And it all joy all starts with receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's how everything started in my life. I want to open up this altar tonight we're, or this morning. We're going we're, we're gonna to sing a song. And if, if you're struggling in your life to find joy, because even in church, we can struggle to find joy. And I know this is not a preaching atmosphere this morning, but it's Sunday school. This is teaching. We struggle to find joy, even in church, even as Pastor Scott sometimes getting behind the pulpit. I'm not always on the mountaintop. I don't always have the sword in my hand and, 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 and the shield in front of me. And I, I you know, feel like I can conquer the giants that I've conquered before. And there were times that David, he didn't always have the ability to conquer a giant. But there was people in his company that stepped up and slaughtered the giants for him so that they did not take his life. And there I believe David found joy in the Lord in that. I'm here to remind you today, joy, true joy, you can be, unha- you can be a happy person in the midst of a trial. You can be a satisfied person in the midst of no provision in your life. When you find your perfect place in God, joy can be there. Joy is not going to be in a couple weeks when, I, uh, when my wife and I get our income tax return. That's not joy. Joy is not when I go out there and I, and, and I start that car because I start that car knowing, hey amen, I got a car note to pay every month. There's no joy in that. Yeah, it feels good to drive it, but there ain't no joy writing the check. So when we look at what what brings joy, really things in life don't bring joy because there's a price tag because either someone has a lot of money or they're in debt. I see a big old F-350 roll by with C-Dews and razors and all that on the back, and my kids go, wow, they must have a lot of money. I said, no, they have good credit, son. with God, once you give everything to Him, there's endless joy. And I want to open this altar because I really believe that we look at the wrong things to find joy in our life. We look to the wrong individuals to find joy in our lives. I don't, when I want to feel satisfied in my life, I don't look to another woman. I look to my wife. When I want to feel excited spiritually and joyful spiritually, I don't look to the world. I look to Jesus. We have to find out what brings joy and satisfaction in our life. I want to open up this altar for somebody this morning that says, God, I want to make sure my priorities are right. I want to make sure that my life is prioritized so that I can experience joy in the midst when I'm down in the valley I can still find joy when I'm when I'm struggling amen with my bills I can still find joy when I'm struggling uh, with with different things I'm a, I, I can still find joy when I'm sick in my body I can still find joy as my wife begins to sing this morning I believe everybody in this place needs to have a revelation of what brings true joy to your to your life personally. Amen. So as my wife